Thank you, Commissioner Neifeld, for your testimony and to you and your staff for your hard work and dedication to the people with intellectual and developmental disabilities across our state. I'm concerned about the 2.5% COLA recommended in the executive budget is far from ad addressing the rate of inflation over the past year. To offset rising inflationary costs, which would necessitate an 8.5% increase. I'm also skeptical that it is possible to address the increasing costs of maintaining benefits, maintenance, utilities, food, supplies, transportation, and insurance given the parameters recommended. I'm deeply worried, as I am sure you are, that direct support positions remain at a nearly 20% vacancy statewide. Since pre-pandemic levels, the vacancy rates are up by 42.5%. The annual turnover rate for such staffing at agencies statewide is at 30%. I'm interested in knowing how it is possible or even practical to operate effectively given these circumstances. As you know, the workforce is largely comprised of women of color who deserve to be compensated fairly. We have all heard reports that workers are fleeing for better paying and less demanding jobs in retail and fast food. I'm very interested in knowing what is being done to stem what seems like a massive jobs hemorrhage. I am sure you will agree with me that people with disabilities need the dignity of their independence and workers need the dignity of a fair wage for their skills and care. So Commissioner, I'd like to start by asking a few questions uh, dealing with the workforce. It, it, excuse me a, a second. Uh, the time clock should have been 10 minutes, so can you, Can you add seven, I guess, or six? Yeah, right. add eight minutes, actually. Oh, sorry. See, I can't do math. That's scary. <laughs> uh, set it for eight minutes, please. Thank you. OPWDD recently released a five-year strategic plan which highlights that the first goal is to strengthen the workforce. And it says that it will advance the services systems infrastructure by investing in the workforce. What specific investments does the executive budget include to address this beyond those, the funding through ARPA and in our last year's budget? Sure. Um, you know, as I talked about in my testimony and in my responses to Senator Mannion, the, we have the 2.5% COLA um, proposed in the upcoming budget, and that builds on the current fiscal year's 5.4%. As I said, that's a $700 million investment in the, in the OPWDD alone, not-for-profit system over the course of the two years, which we're expecting to see um, at least a portion of that invested into the workforce. We have our attestation form out now and, and waiting to hear back from our providers exactly how they're investing those dollars, but we're hearing um, at least early reports that those dollars are, be inve are being invested in our workforce. Additionally, this year's budget carries over the healthcare worker bonus from last year, so not-for-profit providers continue to have the ability to use the healthcare worker bonus as a recruitment tool. And then I won't go into it again, but you heard the list of you know, um, you know, extensive recruitment activities that we're undertaking, partnerships with BOCES, partnerships with SUNY, partnerships with the National Association for Direct Support Professionals, with Georgetown University um, you know, to increase our cultural linguistic competence, and that will also impact our staff, and a, um, a $10 million marketing campaign to help highlight the importance and the significance um, of this job. All of these efforts really to attract people to this field, to help professionalize the field and to continue to support um, our workforce. And I agree, right, our workforce is incredibly vital and, um, and they do an incredible job every day. You mentioned um, partnerships with SUNY and Georgetown. Do you have a partnership with CUNY, the City University of New York? Um, we um, have been exploring partnerships with CUNY, um, and I can get you an update certainly on where we are with that, um, you know, after this, but certainly, you know, we are exploring partnerships with CUNY that would look very similar to what we're doing with SUNY, recognizing um, the students in, at the, in the city university system should also benefit from the micro-credentialing capabilities. And again, the SUNY Empire program, right, SUNY Empire is the SUNY without walls, so certainly available to all all students, and that would allow for, you know, training as a DSP to translate into college credits. The $10 million campaign that you reference, is that being done in-house or are you using an MWBE PR firm or? 
We have a procurement out on the street now um, that was released in February. We're expecting to have um, that back in the next month or so um, uh, to recruit for a for a, an independent PR firm to come in. And certainly the, the MWBE requirements for all procurements apply to, to that opportunity as well. So there are minimum requirements there. With the investments that were made in the budget last year, has OPWDD seen any improvement in the workforce metrics? Um, yes, as I, um, as I said, we have been seeing certainly stabilization in terms of retention. We're seeing our ability to retain workforce um, improving, and we are looking to increase the recruitment opportunities through you know, all the things that I just sort of listed for you and, and for the Senator um, around our recruitment activities. But we are seeing a stabilization over the last several months in our workforce for the first time. Um, I'd like to switch to residential. How many certified residential vacancies are there currently in the system? And what's the breakdown of the vacancies between OPWDD and the nonprofit providers? So these numbers are dynamic. The numbers that I have for this morning for the voluntary system is, you know, around 980 vacancies and in the state operated system around 370. And these are the actual available vacancies. Um, you know, they remove opportunities that can't be staffed or are not available because of physical plant um, concerns or, or other issues. So those are the actual available vacancies in our system. What is the average length these vacancies remain open? Um, that's not a number that I have with me today, but we can certainly follow up with you on that average length of how long a vacancy remains open. How many individuals are currently approved for certified residential placement but have not been placed? So we categorize um, our certified residential opportunities list um, based on emergency need, substantial need, um, and current need. And so that's a way of you know, providing an opportunity um, you know, to provide access to our system you know, based on, on need. Many people who come to us um, you know, looking for a residential opportunity are people who are already being served in our residential system, are looking for a new opportunity, are looking to move. Um, you know, so the, I think the number that you're probably looking for is the emergency need and that we have about 1,200 people. That was my next question is how many are currently considered emergency need for residential placement and what's the average length of time that someone is on the emergency need list? Currently about 1,200 people on the emergency need list and those are people who, um, you know, who have the most sort of, you know, immediate need for a residential um, opportunity. Um, I can get you, again, in the follow-up, we can get you the average length of stay um, or the average length of time that somebody spends on the emergency need list. But it, it varies because the needs of the individuals on that list vary. So based on the number of OPWDD state-operated residential vacancies, why does OPWDD not place them in your own residential vacancies? So I think it's important, right, to acknowledge that the services that OPWDD provides are voluntary, right, and we don't have a placement system. Our opportunities are made available to people. Um, we have a person-centered planning process, so what we do is try to understand the needs of the individual, whether it's clinical, medical, their support needs, do they have a job, where are their community, where are their family, um, and make opportunities available that are going to meet those needs. And then those individuals and their family have the opportunity to choose whether or not they would like to pursue that opportunity and move into that home. We like to try to place people um, you know, with roommates or housemates that will be, you know, um, that, that will work for them. So it's not as simple as just saying we have an opening here in this program or we're going to place this person there. We have a very, like I said, person-centered planning process that does take time and is based, you know, very specifically on the needs of the individual. So I just have one minute left. I'm going to try to get in two quick questions. One about the internships referenced in the executive budget. What investment is being made as part of the executive budget to advance that proposal? And what is OPWDD doing to increase employment for people with disabilities? So I'll, I'll answer in reverse order um, because that's the question that I know the answer to. Um, we have, you know, employment is a huge piece of our strategic plan and we are doing a lot to support employment opportunities for people with disabilities. Um, we have a procurement out for career and technical um, 
technical training right now that we'll actually be making awards today. We'll have um, new providers in at least every region of the state. We're working on providing certification um, and a toolkit for employers to promote inclusive workplace environments. We're working on regulatory and administrative changes to ease the burdens for our providers so that they can more easily provide employment opportunities. And we're having conversations and trainings with our care managers, really emphasizing the importance of providing employment opportunities. We also have the governor appointed last year, Kim Hill, the chief disability officer, and employment is a big um, you know, piece of her work and we partner very closely with her. And we can follow up with you on the other answer.